Hi, this is Tynetta from Sting Beauty, and today I'm going to show you how I do this short set with gel polish. So I'm going to start off by pushing back her cuticles on all her fingers. I'm using the rose gold cuticle pusher from stingbeauty.com. It comes in a packet with a cuticle nipper as well. Once I get all the cuticles pushed back, I'm using my Sting Beauty flat top cuticle bit, and my e-file is at a speed of 12,000. I'm going in a forward motion all the way around her sidewalls and the cuticle area to remove any dead skin that is built up on the nail plate. Doing this step helps remove any skin that you can't see that's adhered to the nail plate and it's going to allow your product to adhere to her nail a lot better. This also cleans up the look of the cuticle area. To me, it's a necessary step because I don't think that a full set can look its best with crusty cuticles, okay? But that's just me. So now I'm going in with my sanding band. This is a medium grit sanding band. You can get this on stingbeauty.com as well. I'm going forward at a speed of 8, which is 8,000. And I'm just making sure that I'm getting into those sidewalls, into those corners, and removing the shine from the surface of the entire nail plate. So as you can see, I'm bending her finger so I can go ahead and get into those corners. This step is super important because this is what's going to help prevent a lot of lifting. You want to make sure that you're getting close to the cuticle as possible because lifting starts at the cuticle and at the sidewall. So if we can get that area prepped really nicely, you're going to prevent a lot of lifting. Once the nails are all prepped, I'm going to go ahead and apply the stiletto tips onto all of her nails. Even though we're doing a short square set, when I cut these, they're pretty much a perfect taper square shape. So that's why I prefer to use the stiletto tips for like a short square. It just makes shaping easier. So right here, I'm just measuring, making sure that the tip fits her entire finger and that none of her sidewall is showing. Now I'm using my Steam Beauty brush on glue and I'm just applying a very small amount to the edge of the nail tip and then holding that in place. If the corners are still lifted up a little bit then I can just dab a little bit of glue with my brush and make sure everything is glued down. Now that all the tips are on, I'm going to go ahead and cut them down to the length that she wants. Since we're doing a short square, I end up cutting off most of the tip. And now I'm going to measure her nails on both hands to make sure everything is the same length. After I shape everything, I'm going to prime her nails. And now that I have the primer applied, I'm going to go ahead and apply the acrylic. So for today, I'm just using Crystal Clear Acrylic from Stingbeauty.com and I'm using a size 12 acrylic brush. This is just a random brush that I've had for years that I got from my local nail supply store, but any acrylic brush should work. So as you can see, I'm picking up a medium sized beads and just placing that by the cuticle area and allowing that to flow down her nail. At the same time, I'm making sure that there's no product on her skin and I'm making sure that the shape is as crisp as it can be. You want to make sure that acrylic isn't running off the side of the nail, getting all on the skin or messing up your shape. So I'm just patting that into place, pushing it lightly so it can be up close to the skin but not touching the skin. And I'm using a really, really light touch until the acrylic starts to harden. You don't want to just go in pressing real hard because all you're going to do is wipe all the product off. So here I'm tapping and lightly blending. Okay. Same thing with this bead. Place it and now I'm just tapping it around the edges to guide it to where to go. I, you see I'm not really swiping down the middle of the bead until it starts to harden. Now that everything is set, I'm going to use my 100 grit file to go ahead and reshape everything. Make sure the shape is the shape that we want, our final shape. Making sure we have all straight lines and sharp corners. 
and you also want to check the sidewalls of the nail to make sure that those are straight and that there's no extra product that's gone on the side of the nails. A good tip for shaping is making sure that you are always stopping to check what you're doing. You want to stop and look at the nails to make sure that the way you're filing is giving you the results that you want. You also want to compare each nail once it's finished to the previous nails you already did to make sure that everything has the same shape. Once everything is nice and shaped, I'm going to use a fine carbide drill bit to smooth the surface of the nail. As you can see, I'm smoothing any lumps or scratches off the top of the nail, making sure that it's the perfect thickness. And I'm also using that sharp edge to go around the sidewalls and the cuticle area to make sure that the acrylic looks nice and flush. I like to make sure that this area is nice and flush because this helps the acrylic to stay sealed to the nail because there's no area where stuff can get under. Anytime that you're using gel polish, you want to make sure that the surface of the nail is as smooth as possible. So that's all I'm doing here is just going over it to make sure everything has a nice, easy transition and that there's no lumps or raised areas on the nail. You also want to make sure that the cuticle area and the sidewalls are nice and flush. This is what's going to give you that nice, clean, polished look. Gel polish will show any imperfections that you have in the nail. So just make sure that once you finish smoothing the surface, you go over with a buffer to smooth out any of the scratches that the e-file leaves. So recently I went ahead and purchased the entire gel polish collection from Tracy Nails. So my client chose this color called rule number one. This is color number 51 and this is a really cute Barbie pink color. These gel polishes are really nice. They are very high quality which means that they are a little bit thicker. So you have to work slower with them and just make sure that you are getting the nice coverage that you want. Now, when I'm using gel polish, if the one thin coat doesn't give a full coverage, I'm not going to pile the polish on just trying to get it done in one coat. You want to make sure you're doing two to three thin coats of polish. This is what's going to help you keep the shape of your nails. And this is also going to prevent the polish from peeling and chipping. So once I get the nails polished with the first coat, I'm going to take a detail brush and some alcohol and just go around the sidewalls and the cuticles and remove any polish that was on her skin. I place her hand in the LED lamp for 120 seconds. And now I'm going in with the second coat. And as you can see, the second coat just makes the color pop a lot more. It gives a complete opaque coverage where you cannot see through anything. And it just looks a lot better. So I've been using Tracy Nails gel polishes for about a month and a half now, and I do have to say that I really like them. Like I said, I don't get any problems as far as peeling or chipping from my clients. Like I said, I got the entire collection, so I have every color I could ever need, and this is really perfect for doing cartoon art because you don't have to be sitting up custom mixing a bunch of colors. It saves time. So if you do a lot of gel polish, I would recommend investing in her brand. For top coat, I'm going to be using my Sting Beauty Gel Top Coat. This is my favorite top coat. This is what I use on all my clients. And this is just going to seal that color in and give her that beautiful shine for the next three or four weeks. So this top coat is available on stingbeauty.com, of course. And the reason why I like this top coat is because it's stain resistant, which means somebody who's dying hair or a person who smokes cigarettes, their nails aren't going to be changing colors. It's going to stay the same color it is when they leave from the table. And I like my client's nails to stay looking as perfect for as long as possible. So yes, highly recommend this top coat. 
and I'm just putting a nice thin amount on each of her nails. You don't need to have too much because that's how it'll start seeping off the sides in the nail and mess up your shape, okay? So I cured that for 30 seconds, and this is the finished product. Look at those cuticles. Look at that Thank shape. you so much for watching. Look at that beautiful, If you learned anything from this video, please subscribe for more very, content. Very pretty color. And also follow me on Instagram at Sting Beauty Studio for more behind-the-scenes looks at my work and my studio.